Good evening, amen. Glad to be here with you this evening. I'm thankful for the privilege to stand before you and always when I have opportunity to bring the word of God. I was watching uh, uh, television for a little while in the, this morning and all of a sudden my phone went off and it was a notification and I punched the button on the notification and here came a picture up of my wife and I from about 20 years ago. Reflections is what I'm preaching on tonight. I have to tell you, sometimes when those come, it's hard to remember what you looked like. <laughs> and sometimes it's even harder to come to the conclusion what you look like now. Amen? But everything is a reflection. Our whole life is a reflection. And what are we supposed to reflect? We have one obligation to reflect God above all things. That makes you a good person. Anybody that does not reflect God is not a good person. Okay? Because the attributes of God are what makes perfection. It's what makes love. It's what makes love grow. So, of course, uh, I love the book of James. It tells us how to live in a daily life and how to walk, and how to talk, and how to react. So I want us to go to the, to the book of James. Thought I had this marked. Bear with me a moment. Stand with me, if you would, please. Those of you that would like to, I'm going to look at chapter 1 and begin reading verse 22 through 25. Our, uh, James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of, of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right? And that's kind of like uh, looking, looking in a mirror. And that's just one portion of a reflection that God laid upon the heart from the Scripture. So we're going to uh, pray and Speak for a few moments as God would direct us. Heavenly Father, we truly love you. This has been a blessed day, right from early morning, from communing with you and preparing for church. And Lord, preparing to sing and to preach and to teach and to do your work. And your people, Lord, uh, look forward to this day. A good crowd this evening, Lord, a good crowd this morning. And we're so grateful just to be together in the house of God with your people. And Lord, we want to reflect you above all things. So as I endeavor to bring these thoughts you've laid upon my heart, I pray, dear Father, you'll bless it to our lives. Open our minds and hearts and ears and teach us, Lord, and do whatever your ministry is for each and every life. And now I ask your blessings upon every word and everything that's said, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I'll start by giving you just a few, just a few illustrations. I 
I go way back to the McGuffey Reader, I believe it was, and there was a cute little story in there about a little dog uh, that uh, was very, very greedy. And somehow he stole this T-bone steak and was running with it away, and he started to cross a bridge, and as he began to cross a bridge with that T-bone steak in his mouth, He looked down into the water, and guess what he saw? He saw another dog with a T-bone steak in its mouth. And he opened his mouth to try to get that one and lost what he had. That's just a little illustration. But you know what? There's a lot of people get their eyes on the world, and they walk away, and guess what? They got what they wanted but they lost what they had because the grass is never greener on the other side of the the fence, all right? And it kind of reminds me uh, 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 of a person, you know, uh, I, I do not believe that God gave us our bodies to be marked up. That's just me, okay? And so I hope you won't get mad at me if you have one of these things. It's called a tattoo, all right? And here's the deal with that. A tattoo is a mark on your body that God didn't intend for it to be there. I just want to say that I feel with my, this is my, you you can go and ink up your body all you want to, and I, I won't be mad at you, and I won't quarrel. I just don't want my body all marked up. I have enough marks by bruises. And the older I get, the more bruises I get. And maybe bruises aren't supposed to be on there either, but to deliberately do something to your body is something. So it's crazy because once you get one of those things, it's on there forever. It marks you. I've known people have put their love of their life on their arm, and the love of their life disappeared And the love of their life that they now despise is still on their showing. It's a reflection. And someone has described tattoos as as a permanent reminder of a temporary insanity. (laughs) That's just a little, little description right there. And then, of course, we have the mirror. We all have fun with mirror. I've got a whole section right here in my sermon on mirrors, okay? So I'm going, to, I'm going to eliminate that. But God's word is very, very clear. And we preachers, we preach this all the time. And sometimes it feels like nobody's listening. Because if we would do what the preachers preached, we could preach some different sermons. A lady said to me one time, when are you going to stop preaching on soul winning? I said, when you show up for visitation. Well, when are you going to quit preaching on tithing? When you start tithing. You see, when ministers take messages from God and preach them out, that's why God wants you to not only hear. You didn't come just to get your eardrums filled. You came to get something, all right? You need to not only be a, a, a hearer of the word of God unless you're willing to apply what you hear and understand it, it's unnecessary for you. It's just like you walk away and forget. It goes in one ear and out the other. And there, you can get a lot of humor out of this if we want to go a route of humor tonight about people having fun and not listening, okay? Like the little boy, <clears throat> you know, he went out to play, and she said, now, listen, you better come home when I call you. You can go, but you better come home when I call you. And the little boy was out playing. His mother hollered for him. Finally, he came home, and she said, Why didn't you come when I called you? She said, Mom, I didn't hear you until you called the third time. Yeah. Yeah. 
the Word of God, we are to be doers of the Word. All right, so the Bible reflects God. If you've seen a, a beautiful lake with all of the beautiful leaves, especially in the fall, it's colorful, and you look down in that water of that lake, not a ripple on it, you see the beauty and the reflection of everything around. It's just like a picture looking down in the water. Okay? And that's, that's a nice thing to do. So what you are looking at, that's not really what you're seeing. It's just a reflection of what's all around you. Now, believe me, we need to... We need to see and to really have a, a way of knowing what our reflections are. Not just what we look like, but what we actually are. And uh, so when you look at this Bible, when you look at this Bible, it's a mirror. When you look at this Bible, you see God. Because everything in this Bible is about God. Now we can't see him, but to, when we see this word, it is a reflection of God. And think of this, one day we'll be able to meet and see him face to face. What a wonderful thing that's going to be, to see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. But when we see this Bible, we can see Jesus, all right? So the Bible reflects God, and God reflects man. He made us in whose image? His own image. And everything in the mind of God is about humanity. He placed humanity above all of his creation. Above everything you can see in creation, he placed us, mankind, over that and gave us something he didn't give anybody else. That's a living soul. And he placed humanity over his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that left heaven and came down to earth and died for humanity. And you've heard... David and myself both preach upon, upon how the, the fallen angels and the power of Lucifer that have fallen from heaven and how did he deceive one-third of heaven's angels because the Bible that I'm preaching from is eternal. It was already in heaven. And Lucifer knew it when he came down to earth. He knew it in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And he knew it when Jesus Christ himself came up on the Mount of Temptation, and he quoted Psalm 91. The devil is a twister of the, of the word of God, and, and that's, that's what he, he knows. And, and when we have to reflect God, and what is God? All these things, his attributes, his love, his Everywhere, he's all-powerful. And these great attributes and qualities of God, and God reflects mankind. Look, that's why he used, he used men to write the Bible. He used prophets. God has always used people, and that's so important. So God reflects man. We're made in his image. And what does man re reflect? Man reflects himself. You're supposed to reflect God. But the world can sure see you. Amen? The world is looking on. And it's just ironic that God called sinners saved by grace to do the very work of God, and that's a privilege. So that's why when the world looks at me, do they see Jesus? 
because we are supposed to reflect God. But guess what? When the world looks at Ron Dobbs and if I'm walking the wrong way, if I'm talking the wrong way, if my actions aren't, uh, aren't in line with Christian morals and, and, and things, the world's looking, the world can see, can see the Ron Dobbs. They can see the flawed, sinful flesh. Okay? So that's why it's so important to be surrounded in this, in this box of doctrine that David taught and preached about this morning. We got to stay in those boundaries. That's boundaries that hold us together in safety, that we can walk in truth and not fall out into error. Any doctrine that comes out and people change it for their own. They go out into, out into dark, uh, darkness. Okay? And that always causes harm and hurt and division. And it could even, you know, get people totally off track. That's why there's so many false prophets out there and false doctrines and different reasons. People do different things. So it's a safety net that, that we have. So, man, we, we, we will show the world who we really are, okay? And when we are totally sold out for God, God will be reflected and not the world, all right? Because remember, there's, there's three different uh, voices or forces. There's the voice of God. There's the voice of Satan and evil, and there's the voice of <clears throat> self or the flesh. Okay, so who are you going to listen to? Who's the world going to listen to? So remember, you, when you falter away from God, you cannot say, always the devil made me do it. The flesh made you do it. Okay? So we need to see in reality what we are. I want to talk a little bit about mirrors because it's really, really funny. Have you ever wondered why that most people are not, when, you, when somebody takes a picture of you and shows you a photograph or a picture, why you don't think you look good in your picture? You want me to tell you why? Because you're looking at everything backwards. In the mirror, you look in the mirror, and it's a perfect, clear reflection of you. All right? And I think I've told you this before. It used to aggravate me to death. Someone take my picture, and no, that's not, that don't, that don't look like me. <clears throat> I used to part my hair on the right side, and in the mirror, I look, and it's on the left side of my face. <laughs> then I would switch it over, and then the left became right, and right became left, and that mirror lied to me, so I just compromised. I started parting it right down the middle. <laughs> I mean, you can't win for losing. But the left side of my nose is the right side, and the right side of my nose is on the left side. And I put my smile out there, and see, I had one little crooked tooth, and guess what? The crooked tooth was on the wrong side of my face. No wonder I don't look like, I look like that in my portrait, okay? Because you don't get a true picture of, of what you, what, what's really there till you take the photograph and you actually see. And this Bible talks about that. A man that is a hearer of the word only and not a doer is like the man that looks at himself in the mirror, walks away, and forgets what manner of man he was. That's why we need to see exactly what we look like, know exactly where we stand with God, and that's exactly why that I think that this little thing right here 
that we put together about what's strong with me, uh, for what should be strong in reflecting God. And you know what? I'm going to take just a minute to read these things to you. You probably already took one home, and maybe you haven't even read this thing yet. But when you, it's good for you to analyze. That's why God laid this on my heart to put these little columns in here so you could grade yourself on the scale and see where you really stand in honesty. And this is not for nobody else. You're not turning these into the pastor. You're not going to give a report to nobody about the, the what letters you put down on this. This is between you and God. But here's some areas that God literally, literally laid these thoughts upon my heart to write these down, and I just want to read them. For instance, you're going to be analyzing how much love you have for Jesus. You're going to be analyzing how submissive to you are on the will of God, for God performing his will and not yours. Uh, about the, the doctrines of the Bible, do you believe one of them or two of them, or do you believe all of them? We have to believe all the doctrines of the Bible, not part of the doctrines of the Bible. It's all God's word. Doctrine is important. You look it up, and it's the, it's the blueprint of your whole life. It's the package of how you, how you put it together, how it's assembled, how wonderful it's going to be. It's the glue that holds Christianity in, in, to the hand of God. And so it's so important. I'm, I'm very glad that we're putting some emphasis this year on doctrine. It's so important. And then you're going to be analyzing how much faith. Where do you stand with your faith? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. How about your trust in God? We don't do a lot of things because we think we can't. <clears throat> if we think we can't and God's called us, then we're not because we don't trust God with it. How's your trust? Your courage? Your confidence in your ability? If you're tuned into God and you can see what you are, it's not just what you see in the mirror, it's what you are. It's not what you think you are or what others think you are or what you even think you are. It's what God knows you are. That's so important to get a reality on where you stand. How about your footing? Is it on solid ground? Is there error in your life? Is there confusion there? And then your willingness to make a commitment. Boy, I tell you, our world went haywire with nobody wanting to make a commitment. Well, we'll just live together and see how it works out. Cowardly. Going away from the word of God. We need to stay with the doctrines of the, of the word of God. How about your obedience? When you see something in the Bible or hear something preached you ought to be doing or shouldn't be doing and things you are doing, uh, uh, do you just hear and let it go in one ear or out the other or obey? Just simply trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. How about your testimony? How about your witness life? How about how dependable are you? Dependability. Can, you can count on God. Can God count on you? Uh, of giving, of tithes and talents and time and all the things I preached about this morning that God has given us. It's amazing. God's given us everything. What have we given him? Our stewardship in how we handle the things that God has given us. Our prayer life, our praise and worship. How about your resilience? Do you get discouraged easy and quit easy? Or do you stick with it no matter how tough? 
Boy, I tell you, when I was, I was in college, and David went through this too, Midwestern was hard on this. You don't even mention the word quit. Right. Sermon after sermon after sermon. I got so tired of the sermons. Don't give up. Yeah, don't quit. Don't quit. And guess what? Students would still quit. People need to see the direct will of God. During my time at uh, my time at college, there was a young man that got a scholarship to Marshall University to play football for Marshall. He enrolled at Midwestern Baptist College, and I heard Doctor Whitfield tell this story, this true story, when I was in school. And this young man came to Dr. Whitfield and said, "Uh, Sir, I'm going to have to leave school. And he said, why? He said, I've been offered a scholarship to Marshall. And Dr. Whitfield said, did God call you here? He said, yes. He said, then if God called you here, why do you want to leave for a scholarship? And that young man changed his mind. It's early September after he had just enrolled. All right? He was offered a position to go there to play football for Marshall. And when the Marshall football team landed at, I believe, one of the real early games, the first or second game, that plane went off and tried to land and went off in the mountain and every, every Marshall player died in, in that tragic thing. And you know what? He came to Dr. Whitfield crying, and he said, thank you for your counsel. Had I been on that plane, I would have perished. It just absolutely pays yes, to be resilient, and if God calls you to a task, stay with it. Don't give up. Don't slack off. Don't quit. How's your decision-making for God? How about your love for your brethren? How about love for soul winning? How about your thirst for the word of God? You think upon these things, and man, it'll help you. And if you're honest, and you'll be putting a few low numbers on this sheet, But as you write a low number on there with a prayer, say, God, help me to raise this number. I want to do better. And that way, it'll help you to get a reflection of what God is seeing. Because remember, it's not what others think of you. It's not what your pastors think of you. It's not what you even think of yourself. It's what God knows about you. And if we, can, if we can forget about the false hoods of that, of that mirror and the bad images and the reverse things that's opposite of what it should be. Listen, one simple philosophy to live by is a great song. A great song was written and sang and our family started learning it, I, I think, from the Lefebvre Quartet that says, Not My Will but thine be done, Lord Jesus. And that's the prayer Jesus prayed in the garden. Not my will, but thine be done, Lord Jesus. So I just want to give you what mankind projects, or you. Your life reflects your character. Everyone can see what, what they can see. Your character is reflected by your life. That's important. Your character. Okay? Next, your conversation reflects your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The conversation. Your serving God reflects your priorities. You see, you could have been someplace else tonight. 
watching one of the great big football games. And I've got a football fan sitting right here in the presence of God tonight. But I wanted to tell you, I think I told you about Trey Gowdy. He's on, uh, he's on the Fox News. They gave him a new show. And he had tickets to a Dallas Cowboy game when he was 17 years old. He lived in Texas, and his parents made him go to church on a Sunday night. He said, they said, no, you're still living in this house. You're going to church. And he said, I went with the tickets in my pocket, and I was mad. He said, and I looked across, across that big auditorium. He said, I saw the prettiest girl I've ever looked at. And he said, because I went to church that night, I married her. Yeah, it pays to go to church on Sunday nights. It pays to put God first in everything. So serving God, reflecting your priorities. Your obedience when you hear the word of God and you just do what God says and you be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Hey, this is something now that I, just, that I heard that I can do. Please mark it down. Be a doer of the word of God because your obedience reflects respect for God's authority. Right. If you disobey, it's disrespecting the authority of God right. and the authority of the Bible. Right. Your giving reflects how much you love the Lord. Your witnessing reflects our love for souls. Your prayer and Bible study reflects how important your relationship to God is. Moderate, modest dress reflects your morals. A hearer of the word of God is what we're supposed to do. And when we hear it, we do it. Amen? Because right. the man that hears and does not do is like the man that looks in the mirror. I look pretty good. I walk away and I forgot what I saw. Yeah. So when you look carefully at what God is looking at, and you measure yourself carefully, you're going to know honestly what God is seeing because the Holy Spirit of God lives within you and he will empower you and help you to raise the areas of your life to the number fives instead of the ones or the twos or the threes or the fours. Fives, reflections, and guess what? When this church does this survey and begins to have our congregation get to all fives, you're not going to have room for the people that's going to be in this place. Okay? I know that. Because God's the one that builds the church. But before God can build a church, he's got to build his people. And his people have to reflect God for God to do business with you. Amen? Reflections. And uh, we can't help it how we change, but don't. Get used to how you look now because you've got a wonderful change coming. Brother Ted, you're going to get a set of holy teeth one day that will never have a cavity. And you will have to not endure pain to get them. Amen? You'll get some hair on your head. You'll be back to 33 years old just like the Lord Jesus with a glorified body. It's wonderful what God has in store for those that love him.
Because I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. And I'm finished, and I'm sure the pizza is over there right now, and it's still hot. Amen. So let's pray, and I'll.